Good morning. I'm Sherry Kajiwana, the director curator of the Nikkei National Museum. It's so great to see all of you here. Thank you for joining us today on the homelands of the Squamish and traditional Hunkabimun speaking peoples. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish, including the Squamish, Musqueam, Tsleil Waututh, and Kwikwetlam First Nations. We are grateful to be on this shared land. Welcome to Tsumapu. We had the good fortune last year to renovate our museum gallery space, our archives, our resource center, and our shop. And we were able to reopen last July with an exhibit titled Nikkei that drew almost entirely on our permanent collection, giving us a chance to show off our treasures of the collections, but also to tell a multi-layered and diverse telling of Canadians of Japanese ancestry uh, here. And uh, for everyone today in this uh, workshop, the gallery is included, it's free for you to see. So if you've got some time during a break, if we stay on time, we're only 10 minutes late so far. If we stay on time, uh, the gallery is open. The last entry is at 4.30 and it closes at 5. So I do hope you get a chance to catch it. We just refreshed. We opened last July, but we just refreshed um, the objects and a couple of the stories, and it will be up until the end of this July. The, uh, also, since I'm up here, I'm gonna give a little PSA. Save the date, September 26th, it's a Saturday, for the official launch of Broken Promises, which is an exhibit I've been co-curating with the Royal BC Museum, and it's an output of the Landscapes of Injustice. It will be a traveling exhibit. So if any of you have family in Halifax or Toronto, it will be continuing on from here to Pier 21, and then we'll be at the JCCC next summer. Um, with every exhibit that we do, we always pair it with public programming. And nothing could be more germane and relevant to the Nikkei exhibit than Tsunagu. And today is thanks to the very hard work, the dedicated work of Connie Kadoda and Lucy Kumori, who themselves have been passionate about preserving their own family stories, encouraging all of us to do the same and to really start these kinds of conversations. Um, the session today hopefully will be on time, and if it is, uh, do see the gallery, but also stay, because in that section, that's the coffee room, there's going to be a book launch of the BC Studies on Settling Islands, Race, Ingenuity, and the Trans-Pacific. Uh, in that one third later today from 4.30. It's a separate event, but if you're here, stay for that celebration too. It'll go from 5.30, 4.30 to 6, rather. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring up Connie and Lucy to tell you more because we do have a full day planned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry, and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to be at this session. You can see Connie come up here. <laughs> so I'm Lucy Komori and this is Connie Kidoda. And we've been working on this program for a good nine months, so it's wonderful to see it coming together. And uh, so Connie and I programmed it and in collaboration with Sherry and Nicola Ogiwara at the uh, UK Museum. So we called this uh, session Tsunagu. Tsunaku means basically to connect. So um, it's like a bridge connecting over a chasm. Or in Japan, let's say Tsunaku, the family name passing from one generation to the next. So, you know, like as, as Sherry mentioned, we're very interested in family histories and whether those histories are being communicated to next generations. So that, that's what this is all about, about a conversation between generations. And um, we, we know from talking to a lot of different people that there's no singular narrative about the Japanese Canadian community. So it's really exciting to see, every, to hear everyone's stories. Um, so they're different and yet there's one thing that connects us, um, Japanese, who have, Japanese Canadians who have been here since um, before the war, so it's that incarceration experience that's been um, that, that shared experience, and uh, so we're great grateful for you all being here, and we're very excited to hear what everyone has to say. So now it's Connie's turn. <laughs> all 
pardon me if I read some of this, because I'm really nervous. Um, I first learned about the power of intergenerational conversations when I went on the Thule Lake pilgrimage in 2018. Thule Lake was one of the largest incarceration camps in the United States. And I think for over 40 years, um, survivors and their families have been coming on pilgrimages to Thule Lake. Um, in my particular intergenerational discussion group, there was a 96-year-old Nisei poet, uh, well known in the States, with his wife and his son. And there was also a uh, Yonsei son of a Sansei activist that I met back in the 70s. Welcome, Catherine. She's come all the way up from LA. Um, I was really impressed by the many families that shared their stories. And it wasn't only in the intergenerational discussions. It was like on the bus that Naomi and I took from Seattle to Tule Lake. There was an ongoing storytelling session, both going there and coming back, which was wonderful. Um, for a long time, I guess since the 70s, Lucy and I have been working on preserving and sharing these really important Japanese Canadian stories. But today, rather than retelling or telling these stories, we're focusing on why these stories were often not shared for so long in many families. And of course, we know that also, if you grew up, if you were a sunset growing up in the 50s and 60s, it was also not in our, in our schools, in the education system at all. So we didn't know about it from that either. And also, maybe we can discover some of the effects of the incarceration on the generations that followed the Issei and the Nisei that directly experienced incarceration. Um, next, I'm supposed to go over the review of the day, which is way over there, so I'm going to try and remember what I put up there. Um, Lucy will be introducing um, Karen. Karen. Karen Kobayashi is our keynote speaker and will be speaking next. And then after that, I'll introduce the panelists who will come up here. And um, Karen will moderate specific questions. And after that, um, we'll have a Q&A. Yep. And then after that, lunch for about 45 minutes. And then we'll show um, a film that Lucy and I made called Sedai when we took the ACAM community media course at UBC a couple years ago. And then we'll break into the table discussion. So we told you to sit wherever you want, but after lunch, you do need to sit at the ta your designated table. And there is a big sheet at the back there by the door that says your table number. And so that's where you'll go um, either during or after lunch. We've um, we set an hour and a half, I believe, for yep. it. Um, Facilitators and note takers who we trained uh, will be keeping track of uh, the time. It is a limited amount of time, and we really want to hear from everybody. And after that, I think we're having each table group um, come up and present to the whole group a summary of their findings from the 